EV adoption is growing pretty rapidly. With more and more people having EVs, more and more people will need to charge them, and even plug-in hybrid owners need to plug in sometimes too. So in this video, I want to explain how you go about charging an electric vehicle, whether that's a plug-in hybrid or a battery EV, including things like the physical process for how to charge the car, but also the types of connectors and cables, the different types of chargers, even potentially the rates, and uh, talk about how to find them as well. So let's get started. Now there are two main types of charge that you can use for your car, either AC alternating currents or DC direct current. I made a video on my tech channel, Tech Team GB, explaining exactly how those work. So if you're interested in finding out the, I suppose, electronics behind it, then feel free to go check out that video. I'll leave it in the cards above or on the end cards. But for this video, I want to explain more the practical process of how you charge a car. Now, AC chargers are pretty simple and relatively common. You can use a three pin socket from your home, just a standard plug socket on your wall to charge your car. Unfortunately, that's relatively slow. A three pin plug socket in the UK maxes out around three kilowatt hours of energy. And that's not very much considering that this Zoe has 52 kilowatt hours of usable battery space. So it's gonna take a fair while to charge that all the way up. For a quick top up, that works okay, but if you buy one of these vehicles, then Renault will fit a seven kilowatt hour wall box for free. In fact, a purchase of any of their plug-in vehicles will get you that free wall box, which is something you should definitely take them up on if you can, if you have the, the space and availability, as that will charge your car in literally half the time. You can even use public fast chargers, which using AC can be up to 43 kilowatt hours, although it depends on what vehicle you have, how much charge it can accept over AC. The Renault Zoe that I'm in here tops out at just 22 kilowatt hours using AC, so do keep that in mind when you're searching for chargers. On the other hand, you can use a DC fast charger, which uses the larger CCS connector, as we'll talk about in a second, but that can charge this Zoe at 50 kilowatt hours and can charge other vehicles like the Porsche Taycan up to 350 kilowatt hours. In terms of the types of chargers, I've already explained a bit about two of them. The first one is the three pin wall plug. That is a, a pretty basic adapter in the grand scheme of things that plugs into your wall and plugs into your car. And that's all you need. Like I said, that's relatively slow at just three kilowatt hours, which is gonna take a while if you're trying to do any significant range increase in charge. Whereas the second type is also a home unit, a seven kilowatt wall box that is directly connected to your home's uh, junction box essentially. Uh, and that will run at seven kilowatt hours and that will charge your car a fair bit faster. If you're out and about, public chargers are incredibly popular and growing. The website ZapMap estimates there are over 40,000 public charging connectors, which is absolutely insane. There are plenty to choose from, including some ones that are actually free to charge, like the ones in Tesco car parks right now, which use pod points. Uh, those are AC chargers. They're relatively slow at just seven kilowatt hours. But if you have an EV, you can park in those spaces plug in and charge your car for free while you go and do your shopping. There are also a number of high power public charging stations, mostly DC fast charging stations as that's generally more common right now. Those stations, generally speaking, will offer at least 50 kilowatt hours. Although if you find faster stations, especially the sorts of ones that you might find in and around uh, motorway corridors, those can be anywhere from 100 to 120, 150 to even 250, now 350 kilowatt hours, which is going to top up your car incredibly quickly. Those ultra rapid chargers tend to be, at least right now, being rolled out down south and especially near London. And do bear in mind that those sorts of motorway charging stations and especially general public stations can, you're effectively paying a premium for using those public stations rather than charging up at home. 
it's still not significantly more expensive in terms of final cost. Charging the Zoe up at a public charger around 35 pence per kilowatt hour is obviously more than the 17 or 18 pence per kilowatt hour that I pay at home, but the overall cost is only five or 10 pounds to fill this up completely, rather than say filling up a petrol car, which might be uh, 60 or 70 pounds at home and 100 to 150 on a motorway services. If you own a Tesla, you will also have access to the Tesla supercharger network. Those are effectively permanent fast charging stations that at least for the time being, only work with Tesla cars, and those the, the V2 versions of those are between 120 and 150 kilowatt hours, although those are set in pairs. So it's generally good etiquette to not park directly next to someone else who is charging, unless you absolutely have to, because the supply is, I think, 125 kilowatts split between two, and so if someone else is already charging on one of those pairs, they will get a priority charge rate and you'll charge up a lot slower lower until they leave. The new V3 superchargers though are individual standalone units so it doesn't matter and those can charge up to 250 kilowatt hours. When it comes to the connectors most vehicles uh, being sold today have at very least a type 2 connector. That is what's on the front of this Renault Zoe, and that is used for AC charging, including up to that 43 kilowatt hours if your vehicle supports it. It's a pretty standard and easy to use connector. It locks into place in the vehicle so that you can't accidentally uh, you know, disconnect the cable while it's charging and you can't have your cable nicked from you, uh, but it's pretty simple to use. If, however, you want to use DC fast charging, you need a couple of extra pins. Those are also available uh, on the front of the Renault Zoe, and that's because that is a CCS connector and uses part of the Type 2 connector, making it a pretty sleek and easy to use affair where you can plug in a Type 2 cable if you want to charge via AC or a CCS connector if you want to charge via DC. There is also a, a another DC fast charging connector called Chadabo. That's something that the Nissan Leaf uses, although it seems like Nissan is moving away from Chadabo in favor of CCS, thanks to its simplicity and not needing two different charging ports. And so that may become a legacy connector and CCS appears to be uh, becoming the standard, which is something that I'm personally quite happy to see. Even Tesla who were using their own connector when they first launched their cars are now using the CCS connector, at least here in the UK. Even their superchargers now have both their standard and CCS connectors on board. And so you can charge up at any one of those stations and any vehicle, but it's also much easier and you don't need any adapters to plug in at a standard public station instead. When it comes to the cables, there are kind of three main ones that you'll interact with. The first one is, like I said, that three, uh, three pin wall plug. That has a type two connector on one side and a three pin wall plug on the other. And that's something that you can either keep at your home as your primary source of just topping up the car, or something you keep in the boot so that if you were to ever run out of juice while you're on the go, you can plug it in somewhere and have a quick top up to get you to a, a faster charging station. The next one is also one that you will end up keeping in your boot. That is also a type two cable. And that's because a lot of the type two chargers don't have cables on them. The pod points in Tesco car parks are effectively just sockets that you bring your own cable and plug those into. And so that is a cable that you will interact with relatively regularly. And again, it's something that you need to keep with you in the car. And finally, if you're using a fast charger, those will pretty much always have their cables pre-attached and permanently connected to the charger. So you take the say CCS connector out of the charger and plug it into your car. And then when you're done, you take the connector out and put it back onto the charger. Uh, and that's the, the sort of standard process. When it comes to finding chargers, you have quite a few options. Apps like PlugShare actually work with Android Auto, meaning that you can use PlugShare in your car, potentially while you're on the road to find where the nearest uh, charger is to you or one along your route. 
If you're planning in advance, you can use an app like PlugShare, uh, like ZapMap, which is very similar to PlugShare and offers things like community integrations to tell you if chargers are in use or if they're working just fine, what sort of rates you can expect and potentially pricing as well. Although I didn't find that working with Android Auto, so it's technically slightly less useful especially while on the go. Many chargers also require, or you can benefit from using their own app. The pod point points at Tesco require you to use their app to confirm your charge uh, while you're charging within 15 minutes of you plugging in. Otherwise they will stop charging. Now that is nice, uh, a good benefit. Obviously it's free charging, so that's great. But one of the benefits of having that app is being able to see if chargers are currently in use or not in operation. That's very handy for being able to quickly make sure that a charger is free before you use your last dregs of range to get there instead of a different one that maybe is available instead. On the flip side to that, there are chargers like BP's Polar Pulse Network, where if you have their app, and more specifically, if you pay for their monthly subscription, then you get preferential charging rates. You pay just 15 pence per kilowatt hour for their slower 50 kilowatt chargers. Uh, whereas if you just use their app, you're just a member on their app, but you don't pay for the subscription, you pay 25 pence per kilowatt. And if you just pay by a contactless or as a guest, then you pay 30 pence per kilowatt. And lastly for this video, I want to talk about the process of actually charging an EV which is relatively simple, but it's a slightly new process to some, so let's walk you through it. First of all, you'll need to know where your charging port is. On the Renault Zoe, it is at the front under the front badge, so when you pull into the charging bay, you want to pull in nose first. You can then press the charger unlock button, much like your fuel filler door unlock button. It's on the right hand side, uh, just by the driver's door handle. Uh, so you press that, the door will open up a bit. You can open up all the way and open the dust covers and waterproofing covers off of the connector. If you're just plugging in via type two, not CCS, you don't need to open the bottom flap. Although if you are using a CCS connector, obviously that needs to come down. Then you go to the charger. In the Instavolt case, the one that I've been using the most, you can tap your contactless card, in my case, my phone. It will take a, an initial deposit payment and then it will tell you to plug in your car. Make sure that the car is unlocked. This car has contactless and uh, our keyless entry and it will uh, effectively lock the car the second you're not either in it or very next to the driver's door. So make sure the car stays unlocked, then plug in the charging connector and the car and uh, charger will communicate and start charging. You'll be able to see that on the charger screen or potentially via the app or in the cars uh, on the car's dashboard as well. Once it's started charging, you can then either lock the car and say go shopping, or you can stay with it and let it charge while you're you know, sat inside and waiting. Like I mentioned, there are slightly different processes depending on what charger you're using. That's the, the general gist, but for example, pod points uh, like you to plug in and it will start charging, and then you go to their app and you press the confirm charge button. Otherwise, like I said, it's a pretty simple process. It's pretty easy to get used to, but that's a, a nice little walkthrough on how it works, at least right now. So that's an idea of the charging rates, ports, connectors, how to find the chargers and the different types of chargers and the general process for how to go about it. I hope the video has been useful and informative for you. If it has, feel free to let me know in the comments and leave a like. And if you have any questions, feel free to leave those in the comments as well. And I'll do my best to get back to you. If you want to see more videos like this one on a weekly basis, then hit that subscribe button with a bell notification icon. Don't forget to check out the full review of this Renault Zoe that came out last week. That will be on the end cards as well as the text from GB video. So feel free to go check that out if you want to work out how these chargers actually work. And otherwise, that's pretty much it. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. And we'll see you on the next video.